Good morning guys, it is getting close to 10 o'clock now and I am about to bake some bread. I have recently gotten back into the habit of baking bread every day, which sounds like a lot, but actually it's super easy. The hardest part is just getting into the habit of doing it every day, but um, I do a no need long rise bread, like the crusty Dutch oven bread that's all over Pinterest, and it's so simple. It's four ingredients, and you don't have to knead it. You just mix it up and leave it on the counter for about 24 hours, and then it's ready to bake. So what I do is usually first thing in the morning, I um, come into the kitchen, you know, around 6.30 or 7-ish, and I bake the bread because it's been rising all night and then I don't even wash the bowl I just go ahead and add the ingredients for the next day and mix it all up uh, put it put some plastic wrap over the top of the bowl put it back in the corner and then the dough sits there and rises for 24 hours and it's all ready for me the next morning so as long as I'm in that routine it's super super simple now this morning was a little bit different because um, I had told the kids that if they didn't eat both loaves of bread uh, yesterday that I would make some French toast if there was some leftover. So they only ate one loaf of bread yesterday and left the other one so that I could do French toast. So you saw me do that this morning. I sliced up the day old loaf of bread and made French toast with it. So I didn't bake the dough that I had sitting here on the counter. So I was just about to do that, but I wanted to chat with you about it first and show you my process. Here's what my dough looks like. I just have it sitting like this for about 24 hours and it bubbles up. I do a double batch so that I can make two loaves. I bake the loaves in my Dutch ovens. I have two Dutch ovens, one's large, one's small. So in the large one, I get like a flatter loaf and in the small one, I get a nice really round loaf, but that works out pretty well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the oven to 425. I have a convection oven that has a speed bake fan. So I'm gonna use that. If you don't have a convection oven, do uh, 450 degrees. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my Dutch ovens in so they can start preheating while the oven is preheating. I'm gonna separate the dough into two lumps so it can rest before um, I put it in the oven. And I found the best way to do that is to use a couple of bowls and to use oil. In the bottom I have some coconut oil. I'm just gonna smear all over the bottoms of the bowls. I've tried using parchment paper. I've tried using um, like really floured parchment paper, but I find that the oil works the best because the really sticky dough just absorbs flour really fast and it's still super sticky and I don't wanna put a lot of extra flour into the dough. So the oil seems to be the best option. All right, so I totally forgot that um, we were planning on making some mummy hot dogs since today is Halloween um, with half of the dough. So I'm gonna put the saran wrap back on this lump of dough and let it sit until closer to lunchtime. And then we'll do um, a nice batch of mummy dogs. And of course that means I don't need my two Dutch ovens in the oven. So I'm gonna cook in the smaller one because I like the nice round loaf better than the giant loaf, the flat loaf. So that's what the dough looks like. I'm just gonna cover it with saran wrap because um, I don't want the top of the dough to dry out. I'm gonna let this rest just until the oven is preheated. It'll probably be another 10 or 15 minutes and then we'll plop it in. Okay, now I'm not even gonna wash my bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and put my ingredients in here and get it mixed up and um, it'll be all ready for tomorrow. I use my kitchen scale to measure the flour. That means less dirty dishes, right? I don't have to use a, a measuring cup. 
And since I'm doing a double batch, I do about two pounds of flour. Yes? So I'm gonna do a tablespoon of salt. And then I've seen different recipes call for different amounts of yeast. And I find that I actually get the best uh, result if I do a half a teaspoon of yeast for a double batch, which is a tiny amount. Um, but it works well. I think it's because I let it ferment for a full 24 hours. If you have too much yeast, it'll overproof and you don't want that. So um, half a teaspoon of yeast works out pretty well. And then I just, I heat up my water just slightly so it's just, it's not cold. Just barely warm water and I'm gonna do three cups. Then all you have to do is just mix it until all the flour is absorbed and you don't have to knead it. You don't have to do much of anything. This is just the easiest recipe. At this point, the dough doesn't look very pretty, but that's how it's supposed to be. I'm reusing my plastic wrap too, so don't even have to use a new piece every day. As long as I keep this going, it ends up being super cheap and super easy. And this is gonna go back into the corner of my kitchen. All right, oven is preheated, so I'm very, very carefully taking my Dutch oven out. Now I'm just gonna try to plop this in there. See how it comes, that's not too bad. And then this is an optional step, but I think it looks the nicest if you sprinkle a little flour on top and the end result is really nice lid back on, back in the oven for 30 minutes. All right, what are you guys making for Halloween? Um, Make cracker? Yeah. Okay. We're making uh, graham cracker peanut butter sandwiches. So taking these and making sandwiches and dipping them in chocolate. Dipping them in chocolate? Mm -hmm. And to make them Halloween-like? I'm going to put a little... Eyes candy eyeballs. It's gonna be awesome. Levi, are you helping? Are you the big helper? Yeah, the big taste test helper? You can taste everything. Yeah, you got more? You got it? Yeah. Right on, right one. Right car? Yeah. Yeah. What color is it? Red. It's orange. Can you say orange? Orange. Good guess though. Red. It's close to red. Mom right there. Mom's right there? Yeah. Hi. Hi, how are you? Do you want some fluffy milk? Yeah. What do you think about fluffy milk? Oh, don't. Please don't let the grace card drink it. Please don't let the race card drink it. Got milk? Yeah. Got milk? No, right there. Milk on your face? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see that milk on your face. After 30 minutes, you just remove the lid. Ooh, it's starting to look pretty. And you cook it for 15 more minutes with no lid. All right, 15 minutes is up and it's ready. You wanna eat more bread? Look at how beautiful that is. So satisfying every time. And that's all there is to it. Look at how cute. They're so ridiculous and adorable. All right, we're getting ready to go on the mummy dogs. Renee is gonna help, are you ready? Yep. This is gonna be messy. Um, so I found the best thing to use is oil on your hands to get it to not stick. Actually, I'm gonna put um, flour on the cutting board. So can you get some oil and get your hands all oiled up? And then we'll get flour on the cutting board. This one. Grab some more dough. Well, it is hard. To get out of there. Now 
Taste test. Does it taste <laughs> tastes like a blue ghost? Eat, eat one too. <laughs> Is it good? Yeah. <laughs> you want to eat all of them? Yeah. No, you can't eat all of them. It's really nice. good. Whoa. Yeah, that one looks like a skeleton or it's a skull. It does. It's a fork and This one looks like I think it was like a living burrito. <laughs> I feel that way sometimes. <laughs> Don't still kill. And this one, I think it's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so Those look pretty good. Terrifyingly delicious. Yeah, go get a plate or a napkin. Perfect Halloween lunch, mummy hot dogs, and crunchy veggies. Sounds great. Oh, don't touch them all. Levi is down for his nap now, and the next thing on the agenda in my kitchen is to make some Instant Pot nacho cheese. A friend gave me a whole bunch of white cheddar cheese, like a giant block. It was like a Costco pack, or Costco giant block and she couldn't use it all, so she gave me most of it. And uh, so I'm gonna use that to make my nacho cheese recipe. I have a video and a blog post on the nacho cheese that I will link to in this video if you wanna check it out. But it is gonna be for Halloween movie night tonight. Um, I thought that would be a good snack along with, of course, candy. Always gonna be candy, um, so that's why I'm trying to focus my Halloween goodies um, on a little bit more healthy food, like regular food chips and queso, mummy hot dogs, because uh, there's so many sweet, adorable things you can make, like Autumn's uh, peanut butter graham cracker ghosts or whatever they are. Um, they're super cute. They're super fun. There's so many uh, treats like that, but there's only so much of that that we really need. Um, and then, of course, like our neighbors, they're the sweetest, and they give the kids bags of candy every year. And so we have lots of Halloween candy that they're going to get, you know, a piece of here and there and goodies so anyways that's why i'm trying to make some special things but also make them you know regular food not not uh so many sweets this recipe is so simple and there's an even easier version that you can do where instead of doing tomatoes uh peppers and onions you can just do like pre-made salsa and use that um, but i happen to have tomatoes and a half an onion that needed to be used so um, i grabbed some jalapenos at the store today so I'd have everything to make it. Um, so I'm going to chop up my tomatoes, chop up my onions, get those sauteing. Uh, I, in the recipe I have diced green chilies but I'm doing a double recipe and I wanted it to be a little bit spicy so I got some jalapenos so I'll do the green chilies and the jalapenos so it won't be too spicy but I'll have a little bit of a kick. And then I'm using some beef broth that I just happen to have in my 
pantry. And then the other ingredients are cheese and cream cheese, and then also some half and half and some arrowroot starch that I use for thickening. You could also use uh, cornstarch. So the nacho cheese is done and it tastes great. It's a little darker in color than my other one because I used beef broth um, and the broth is really dark out of that container, but it still tastes really good. And then also one thing that I started doing since I originally made the recipe or developed the recipe is I started blending it with the immersion blender. Uh, so if you like chunks, then just leave it. But if you like a nice smooth cheese sauce, go ahead and blend it and it turns out really nice. It's almost 3 p.m. now, and I think I'm going to sign off on this video. I really want to get it posted on Halloween today, so I'm going to sit here and try to get it edited and posted before Halloween is over. You guys will know if I succeeded or not. I do still have dinner to make for tonight, and I'm making a keto cauliflower fried rice. Um, not rice, but cauliflower, and so I will post that over on Instagram, so if you want to see dinner, you can head over to Instagram and see that. Thanks for spending Halloween with us. I hope you guys are having a fun and safe Halloween wherever you are at. Let me know down in the comments uh, what you guys did for Halloween, if you made any goodies or whatever. Have a great Halloween and I will see you again in the next video.